my name is Larry O'Brien. I'm on the cybersecurity team at ARC. Uh, so today we're here to talk about the impact of cybersecurity on process safety and what they call level one, level zero, right? Which is really devices, uh, controllers, safety systems, uh, particularly safety systems in this case. Uh, so, uh, unless you've been hiding under a rock, uh, you probably realize now that certain things like safety systems and field devices are no longer immune to cyber threats. Um, process safety systems are a new high profile target as we saw with Trisis, uh, Triton or, or Hatman or you know whichever one of the many names you want to call it, malware. Um, and also what we're going to talk about today uh, is this really considerable install base of digital field devices that are out there. Um, which is still growing significantly, uh, and it's only going to be spurred on by this adoption of the industrial Internet of Things. Uh, and I think we have to keep in mind that no subsystem or device is inherently immune uh, from an attack. Uh, and I think we're just kind of starting to scratch the surface as to how serious this problem really is. Um, particularly when you're talking about large-scale coordinated attacks by uh, nation states with considerable resources as a uh, Many people believe the uh, Trisis attack was one of these. Um, I'm one of those people also. So what we want to ask during this session is uh, what, we, what can we do to protect ourselves? Uh, how can we prepare? You know, if something does happen, how can we best respond uh, to a situation? Uh, and I think there's, you know, some things that have happened recently where maybe we could use as a blueprint uh, for responding to these situations. Um, and it, it's a safe, certainly a safety issue, and I think human life is paramount in these issues because we don't want to see planned incidents where people get hurt or people get killed. Uh, but also downtime is an issue, and it's a tremendous uh, expense to the process industries, which is where I come out of. Uh, we actually did some research last year at ARC and estimated that uh, unplanned downtime uh, probably accounts for around a trillion dollars uh, every year worldwide to the process industries, and I think that's probably being conservative. Um, so just a couple of introductory words on Trisis, uh, uh, Triton, that should not be Tricon, but Hatman. So this was the first attack against a process safety system in the wild. Uh, I think as one of our speakers will point out later, it's not, uh, it's not a new idea, right? Uh, this idea has been around for a while, but this is the first high profile attack we've actually seen uh, in a plant. Um, and we're going to ask some questions like why even attack a process safety system, right? What's behind it? Um, I don't think we want to panic during this time. You know, it's not a time to, uh, you know, run around the streets and dogs and cats living together, you know, and that kind of thing. But uh, it's a wake up call. You know, it's a call to action, I think, uh, for the entire industry. And we do need to take this seriously. Uh, and we do need to better understand the interrelationships between process control uh, and process safety. Uh, and devices are another issue. You know, this is some research that ARC, uh, ARC did on the install base of field devices uh, worldwide uh, a couple of years ago. You know, I don't think this balance has shifted too much over the past few years, but uh, if you look at the install base today, most of the install base is digital. Most of it is smart. You know, over half, over half probably now by the in, of the install base is heart devices. Uh, and you have a fairly good chunk of field bus devices, whether that's foundation field bus or profi bus PA. You still have a, a pretty good chunk of old proprietary protocols that are out there too. If you probably remember the old, uh, you know, Honeywell DE or, or uh, you know, uh, Yokogawa brain protocol, all, all that stuff is still out there. Uh, you know, and I don't think we really understand what the cyber risk is of these devices. Um, and the IIoT is only going to add to this problem, right? Uh, if you've uh, read anything about the state of commercial devices that are being sold as part of the Internet of Things, uh, you know, the state of cybersecurity in these devices uh, can be pretty bad. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you read all kinds of horror stories about devices being hijacked and becoming part of botnets and DDoS attacks. And, you know, I think I, I read it, uh, Black Hat a couple uh, last year, maybe they did a proof of concept for, uh, uh, you know, hacking into smart thermostats and, and basically saying, you know, if you want your thermostat back, you got to pay me uh, 
I think during the proof of concept, it was like 300 Bitcoin, which today would be, I don't know how many, you know, <laughs> that would be a considerable sum today. It was a lot less back then, but IIoT is really going to add to this problem. Uh, we need to figure out what's going to happen here. Uh, so we have a great uh, set of speakers today. Um, Dave Bennett of Phillips 66. We have Joe Weiss of Applied Control Solutions. Uh, we have Ben Miller of Dragos, who's going to be sitting on our panel, but he has a couple of slides to share uh, about Trisis uh, Triton. Uh, we did have a representative of, of Schneider, Gary Williams, uh, who was going to be here. I don't know, uh, Gary got called off uh, at the last minute. Uh, I don't know if we have a Schneider person here who's going to participate in the panel today, but uh, uh, first off, we have Dave Bennett. Uh, so please, let's have a big hand for Dave, and let's welcome him to the stage. Thank you. 